this has been a little more than a five, uh, five plus year journey. The company was founded in January of 2017. We are about 330 people or 350 people strong. Um, and uh, two thirds of the company is software engineers. So as you can see, we are doubling down on software and building software in silicon and delivering a platform and taking a systems approach to innovations as we democratize the cloud, uh, whether it is the public cloud and the hyperscale customers like Microsoft and Oracle Cloud, or whether it's the enterprise like uh, Goldman Sachs, we are really enabling to bring uh, the, the AWS-like architectures, but really leapfrog uh, them at least by a generation in terms of having the ability to bring those same cloud characteristics and distributed services platforms to our customers. We have uh, deployed over 100,000 units already uh, in two years of shipping product, and we are growing at a, at, at a great pace. Uh, as, a, as a company, so it's a very exciting time for us right now. We are getting acquired by AMD for uh, uh, approximately $1.9 billion, uh, and uh, this would put us in a position whereby we, are, by joining the AMD family, we would be complementing the existing portfolio that consists of CPUs and GPUs and adaptive SOCs, uh, and FPGAs with our distributed services platform, enabling our customers and AMD customers to have the opportunity to take full advantage of a portfolio, a very broad portfolio of solutions as everybody is moving towards building uh, cloud architectures in the future, whether those are enterprises and cloud customers alike. Absolutely, it's an inflection point. Uh, if you take a look at today, uh, bulk of the applications uh, and bulk of the data processing is happening at the edge. According to Gartner, by 2024, 75% of all data will be processed at the edge. Uh, and according to other studies done by likes of Facebook, uh, between 30% to upwards of 80% of the CPUs are running infrastructure services. And in the cloud, that equates to wasting 10 million servers per year. Um, in order to deal with a lot of packet processing, the infrastructure services, whether those are software-defined networking services or software-defined storage services, and the need for security and delivering on a zero-trust security model are all coming to uh, uh, are all driven by these applications. These applications could be AI-based, they, they could be IoT-based, or they could just be 5G. Uh, so it's the perfect storm right now in terms of the cloud moving to the edge and these new age applications that are all driven by microservices based architectures that are driving the need for delivery of platforms like the distributed services platform and taking a systems approach and delivering those, uh, those packet processes with the software defined services running at scale at 100 gig and at 200 gig speeds and running them simultaneously whether it happens to be in the edge on a compute environment or whether it happens to be in the manifestation of a top of rack smart switch portfolio that we just recently announced and are now shipping alongside with our partnership with Aruba at HPE. It is a systems play because when you bring together these services that you are trying to run at a very accelerated pace and you are trying to make them software defined, they don't typically will run in isolation they have to run in, in concert with one another. So if you are looking to deliver uh, software-defined networking and on that same uh, platform, you want to enable NVMe virtualization running over a transport like TCP, you want the ability to bring these services to work in, alongside with each other on that same platform and at the same time deliver inline security and visibility. Uh, whether it is inline encryption services or stateful security services like security groups, as well as the ability to have line rate visibility, because what I cannot view, I don't know how to secure. Uh, so bringing all these services together has to be a systems approach. It cannot be a component approach or a device approach alone. So by, by us delivering a full stack solution and giving the flexibility to our cloud customers to consume all of it, parts of it and also innovate with their own business logic that can co-reside with our innovations brings about the necessity to make it a systems play and not a component play. 
Project Monterey, uh, we are very excited about being part of that. Uh, and again, uh, not wanting to go about doing everything on our own. An ecosystem and an open interface are the core, uh, at the heart of this uh, engagement that we have with VMware. We will be the ones working and delivering alongside uh, VMware and their OEM, server OEM partners like Dell and HPE, a solution whereby we would be embedded on the platforms shipped by these server vendors. And Project Monterey is to bring the same characteristics of offloading and accelerating network virtualization services on a platform like Pensando's distributed services card and platform base in order to deliver the same attributes that a cloud customer would be getting, but now you're getting it with VMware properties and while retaining the operational model and the policy constructs that VMware has at par as part of their assets. So we are accelerating those services, we are delivering security, separating tenant space from infrastructure space, and offering the same operational model that VMware customers are accustomed to in the enterprise. I think uh, if you take a look at what we are doing today, uh, small examples, we are uh, providing in the words of Microsoft Azure, uh, the ability to have software defined networking at a completely different scale and disaggregating that, allowing for 40 times more connections per second uh, to their customers as part of Azure, delivering scalable software defined networking services to their clients, where they have taken the entire stack of Pensandos. Whereas in the case of Oracle, we are collaborating with them as an extension of their engineering teams uh, with OCI and bringing about the ability to take their so software-defined networking stack, marrying it with our uh, virtualization and NVMe virtualization storage software and bringing about encryption to work in line with these services. This will provide Oracle a single device that's 200 gig future-proof ready at a 30% TCO savings and a 50% percent power reduction. So this is the power of the and is what I call it. And that is the journey we are on with these cloud customers. At the same time with customers like Goldman Sachs, we are bringing about the ability for them to build for East West security, a software defined security fabric. Uh, and, and it's just and whereby we are a default on every new server that is deployed at Goldman Sachs as, the, as that footprint as they embark on a, having a similar architecture that today is in prominently available with hyperscalers. This is what the evolution is of, our, of the path we are taking. Uh, and as we become part of AMD, I think there are tremendous synergies whereabouts you should, you should be looking out for more applicability of this technology and taking advantage of the other innovations that AMD has uh, within their portfolio. So stay tuned as, as uh, we, we work together to draw out a, ro a roadmap. Uh, already a very versatile roadmap we already have in play with our customers here at Pensando, but also uh, how AMD and the, and, and the integration once that's in place, that will evolve from a roadmap perspective. It's all about execution. We are, we are delighted with the progresses uh, and the confidence our customers have put on us and are taking us into production with, and we will continue to expand that and continue to delight our customers. Uh, and as, as part of AMD, we look forward to now executing on the AMD platform and having the ability for this technology to become far more pervasive uh, as we scale it on a geographic basis.